Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Rise of Industry, or perhaps I should say welcome back. For those of you who have been with the channel for quite some time, you may well remember when I covered Rise of Industry very early in its development cycle, in its development infancy. Well, Rise of Industry has recently released, recently being the 2nd of May, so only, what day is it? It's the 6th, so only four days ago, and I am extremely happy to be able to come back to the game and showcase it here on the channel. Now, now, for those of you who are completely unfamiliar, Rise of Industry is a strategic management game with a focus on, on business um, and, and also the logistics of managing uh, a business. So you might be concerning yourself with how you're getting the raw resources that you're mining or, or harvesting to a factory which produces some sort of end product which you then sell onto a, uh, onto a town or maybe even move further on to another factory to make it into an even more expensive end product to then sell on so on and so forth. This game has more than a passing resemblance to Industry Giant for those of you who are familiar with the game and indeed to Open Transportation Tycoon kind of marries a lot of these genres together and I am very very excited to show the game to you. We're going to start a new game. We have got Dapper Industries and uh, we're going to be going Korea. Build your own empire with nothing but a little money and a dream. Set your own difficulty. Grow through the tech tree and rise to the top. Yeah, we're going to going to try that out. Now, just to have a quick look at the settings here, there are lots of different settings. Each one of these pips is a, a different setting you can have, but basically we're going with the bog standard default 100% difficulty. So I'll leave that on the screen for a moment, but then we're going to jump into the game. Now, the game does have a sort of uh, end goal, and that is the production of a very um, high-end product and its sale, and that might be the first car ever sold, the first computer ever sold, or the, the first... Um, complete dinner ever. I'm not really sure how that one stacks up with everything else, but suffice to say, it's actually quite far in the tech tree. You need a lot of different supporting industries to actually make one of these complete meals. Um, and then you sell that on. And once you have achieved that, I believe that you have effectively won that uh, that game. And you can start again with different uh, difficulties, with different procedurally generated map. The game has a lot of replayability, and you might decide to go for a different goal, uh, or play in a different way. There's lots of different challenges you can have, and scenarios, as you will have seen on the uh, the main menu. And I best swap out my keyboards, because I was about to try and use the keyboard that uh, is running my rendering PC. That would have gone quite badly. Uh, right, okay, welcome to Rise of Industry. Let's begin by placing headquarters. You can place it anywhere, and it will grant a full permit for the region it's in. If you want to, you can disable these helpers in the interface settings. Ah, no, I'm happy to have them there. But we will need to do that. Now, when it speaks about regions, each area, you can sort of see the borderline around here. This is a region, this entire thing, the Shandaf region. That is not that is not an English name, that is a Welsh name. Yes, Scallywags, how dare you steal the names of my towns. Uh, Wrestle, now that totally sounds like uh, an English name. Uh, Bardney, uh, yes. Yes, that is absolutely. An Aust, uh, Tavistock, hmm, I'm not actually even sure that that is an English name. Uh, Kirkswald, okay, uh, some interesting ones, but uh, yes, we've got Ostwery. Now, you'll notice that the, uh, the borders here mark different areas and we can only build our industries and factories within an area that we've got a building permit for. So the first place that we decide to place down our HQ is actually going to make quite a big difference. It will dictate what kind of resources we're going to be able to harvest. For example, Chippenham. If we have a look in here at region, we can see that Chippenham has copper, it has gas, oil, sand, water, and wood. So quite a, a good one here, I would say. It's got a lot of uh, of, of industry potential there. Uh, more heavy industry. All segments have a list of desired products and we'll place... Uh, production buildings to produce these products. If you want, you can purchase these buildings and take over their production. So the towns themselves will do their own thing. Eskom, um okay, that one's got fish, but not very many other in, 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 sort of uh, heavy industry uh, products there. Uh, over here, we've got, again, another fishing town. In fact, the town itself will tell you a little bit about it. It's a hamlet, it's rural. And that uh, term hamlet will go into town, city, village, all that sort of stuff. Uh, thing as the town progresses. Those who are familiar with Transportation Tycoon and how the, the towns gradually build up over time and then become better towns to, to be serving because they'll have more shops and will accept more goods. That's very much how it works here. Ostwery. 
Uh, you already have some extra shops here. Construction goods, interesting. Uh, you've got coal, iron, no copper, but uh, that's quite an interesting one. Roster, uh, another construction good one here. This one's got copper. So if you could get both of these together, you'd probably have a fairly good uh, industry going there. Though we're probably not going to jump into heavy industry straight away. I'm thinking we're probably going to try with food. Everyone needs food. Not everyone needs nails. That's, that's the way I look at it. There are very few things that are guaranteed to sell in life. One of them is medicine. One of the other ones is food. Another one is uh, something to deal with your dead. Uh, I mean, you know, if you own, if you own a graveyard, yeah, let's just put it this way. You're not going to want business. You're going to be fine. Likewise, if you own a farm or if you own a uh, pharmaceutical company, you're probably going to be okay. A hospital or such. Um, Kandaf has quite a spread of of industrial goods there. Now I'm looking at a nearby one, but you don't actually need to to grab regions next to each other. We will be able to purchase access to these locations later on, but I think we're going to start in Kandaf because oh, come on, it's it's called Kandaf. Uh, so we're going to have a farmers market, a hardware store, and a construction goods store. Uh, so many products, so many choices. Here you can see what the settlement wants and how much it's willing to pay for them. Note that selling something at 100% means there is very little profit. So try to aim at high percentages. That's a good bit of advice there. So 150 on uh, bottles, 150 on wooden planks. That's a fairly easy one to hit, but they only require seven every 15 days. Uh, if you look at the hardware store, they require 10 every 15 days of wood. So those are complementary industries. You probably produce more wood than you're turning into planks. So you could sell both. Uh, that's only selling at 130%. Farmer's Market. Let's have a look here. Oh, we've got some really, really nice numbers there. Um, so apples, oranges, and grapes. But no second tier um, industries available here. It's just straight up the goods that you're going to have. We can check that out by looking at the recipe book. So, for example, you've got farms, uh, crop farm. Uh, you might, uh, well, actually, no, we would want an orchard for for oranges and apples and the likes but what you can do later on is go to factories and you can start making um, higher tier uh, goods for example orange juice would be a higher tier good uh, down the orange track an organized list of every recipe in the game yes it it was but i think we're going to be going with candaf so let's pop our headquarters oh we'll pop it over here nice right on the edge there Please keep in mind, this is an industrial simulator game. Try to find out what towns want instead of just producing products you might never be able to sell due to non-existing demand. Click on various settlements to see what shops they have. We've got the, the rough spread of the basics. I think, for the most part, every town has a farmer's market and every town has a hardware store. So you can sell the very, very um, low tier, um, just gathered resources. Now, as I mentioned, I would like to go with um, food to start off with. If I click on farms down here, I can't do anything. Looks like you can't place any of these until you research some products in the tech tree. For example, if you want to place a livestock farm, you need to unlock any kind of animal. Only raw gatherers can be placed freely without unlocks. Now, raw gatherers are these. So a water siphon, a coal mine, copper mine, gas pump, iron mine, lumber yard, oil drill, water well, fisherman's pier, offshore oil drill, and so on, so forth. Uh, that will be useful for us later. But let's go to the tech tree for now. Now, we'll start with three free unlocks at the start of the game so that we can kind of guide the way that we want to start off our industry. From this panel, you can unlock more recipes. Indeed, we can. Now, let me just uh, refresh my memory on Kandaf. Let's have a look at your farmer's market. So we're looking more of orchards. Um, yeah, we could, we could have grapes, oranges, and apples if we want to, going for the orchard. Uh, Livestock-wise... Not much. Um, we've got milk. Uh, if we wanted a crop farm, we could go for hops um, or potatoes. There's also sugar cane we could get. Uh, and fish if we had a fisherman's pier. But I do not believe that fish is a resource that is available in this region. No, it's not. Now, we are going to need water, which is just as well. You're pretty much always going to have water. But let's go ahead over to the tech tree where I would very much like um, drinks. So apples, grapes, and oranges. Now, eventually, these will tick down into other things, but uh, I think I'm probably just going to go for one of these. And I'm going to go for oranges because oranges will eventually go down to a much higher tier product, which is orange soda. So we're going to unlock oranges straight away. Now, we've straight up got an industry that we can work on there. Now, there are other things that I might want to do later on, but for now, let's keep things simple. 
So we're going to want a water siphon. The water siphon uses harvesters to collect units of water from any body of water on the map. Literally any body of water. But the, the more water you can gather from, the better. Now, there is wisdom in building close to where you're going to be selling, because then you've got less uh, ground that your transports need to travel. You're paying them by the tile that they have to move your, your product. So no, not having them have to travel too far, there is something very sensible about that. But additionally, you do want space to grow. Um, there's really no reason for us to have this all the way down there at all. I think just over here is fine. Uh, we should be able to pop this in there and gather our harvesters along the coast of this uh, little lake here. Now, what we want to do is we want to try and find the spot with the most uh, harvesting that we can get done. For example, right there is fine. Right here is also fine. And we can drop another one in there. There we go. You're now seeing the AO of this building. For lumber yards, trees highlighted in green are those that can be harvested, while those highlighted in yellow are currently being harvested. That's the only one that, that has that interface, as far as I'm aware. Now, we're going to want to hook these up. These are the actual gatherers, whereas this is kind of the processing plant for everything that we're gathering. Uh, so let's just bring this up like that. And there we go. We've got a complete circuit, so all of these can deliver. Be careful when placing roads and train tracks, as sections need to be connected. What it's warning about there is that if I put a road here, that's not the same as having the road connected like so. You can sort of see with our little uh, end point there. So this place will now happily gather uh, water there. And later on, we can add more gathering pumps. And this is the true of all gatherers, so you can increase how much you can get. Currently, we've only got three actual harvesters. Now, they're going to produce three units every 10 days. Each harvester will produce one unit, from what I understand, and that's the cycle time. Now, we want to place down a farm, an orchard to be specific. And specifically, we want the orchard fed water from the siphon. So we're going to go ahead we're going to plonk the orchard down right there. And much like the siphon, we've got gathering buildings. But in this case, we've got actual orchards. Now, again, we're going to have only three. So I'm going to go ahead and place these down. Later on, you can upgrade them with another two. So that will be an entire uh, area with five uh, items around it. We can only make oranges right now. I need one water per field, so three waters every 30 days. We're easily going to be producing that. We're producing three water every 10 days, so we could run three orchards off this, which is something we're probably going to do. Farms produce either a livestock or a farm produce product that can be used in factories or other farms. They use fields to generate products which are automatically collected by the farm. Now, you don't necessarily want to cluster too much together. Later on, we'll be able to upgrade this to five every 10 days, and likewise this to five every 30 days. So if we just focus on the on the orchards, we should be okay. Now, currently, this isn't going to deliver any water. What we're going to want to do, you can do this in two ways. You can have a central warehouse, which will collect the water and then distribute it as needed. Or you can have, um, you can do it manually. I do actually favor doing it manually myself, but for the sake of making it much easier to follow, I'm going to forego that for the time being. And we're just going to set it up like this instead. And we're going to going to allow a uh, a warehouse to take care of all of the moving of uh, materials around. So that's a second orchard there. Let's go ahead and hook this up via a road. Now, you'll notice that this has uh, an area of effect. That does not mean where it can deliver to. You can deliver to anywhere. If I went into the destination here and said to deliver over here, it would have no problem. As I can illustrate here, if I go to farms... Um, actually, no, that's the wrong thing. Uh, I was selecting what I wanted to send rather than uh, where I wanted to send it to. I can send it to Clandaf's second orchard, which is fine. Uh, but we are going to want a warehouse. Now, here you can find all the logistics building. The most important one, the warehouse, automatically gathers and redistributes products from or to every building in its radius. Try to put the production buildings all around it for maximum efficiency. Now, it's got a very large radius. Deliveries, again, are not going to be a problem. I don't need the shops to be in the radius. I just need the things that it's going to be collecting from to be in its radius. And I'm happy enough with this right about here for that. I could put it there if I really want to do, but I don't see much of a reason to. In fact, we'll uh, have it here. Now, if you look, there are arrows on this that show the direction that things get delivered and then removed from this particular inventory. I'm going to place this here. Now that you've placed the warehouse, you will want to override its automatic settings. So just go into the input or output tabs and disable some targets, or you want to collect everything. 
uh, it never it never keeps that on the screen. I've never actually been able to read it. Because the moment I place this down, everything is like, I can't get to it. Uh, you'd think that I would remember this every time I try, but I don't. Uh, one day, I'll remember to place the roads first so that they don't all suddenly have a panic attack that they can't get to the warehouse. Nevertheless, we can go in and I can tell it to deliver um, all of this and it will uh, gather the resources from my orchards and water and then it'll deliver the water wherever it needs to be. I can actually reduce the, the radius if I particularly want to or I can be very specific. But if I decide to get specific... I am going to be shutting down its automatic gathering, from what I understand. You can see what your warehouses are bringing in and sending out by looking at the incoming and outgoing tabs in the warehouse. You can also adjust their area of effect. That's fine. Right, a final orchard, so that we're making the most use of our uh, water siphon. We'll place this one right here. There we go. Now, we don't need to do anything else. Everything else will be taken care of automatically. Now, I would like to run... Uh, all of this back. This warehouse is going to exist only for my for my orchards. So you know what? Let's let's go ahead and uh, change this to um, orange orchard one. Can I cut and paste? I hope I can. There we go. That's fine. Orange orchard two, uh, three rather. Yes, perfect. This is glorious because this way it's going to be a little bit easier. Once you've got a large enough company with lots of different industries, renaming things is going to become very important to you. We want orange uh, water siphon. Uh, that's it. We don't need to. We'll just leave it as that. Um, orange water siphon. We may eventually want to change these names um, and have something a little bit more useful if we expand out and have orange in, uh, oranges in different regions. That might be something we want to do. But for the time being, we've got a nice little system here. And I am going to want a road that goes up and around. Now, the reason why I'm not just going to take this road into the town is because there's already going to be a lot of traffic moving to and from on this road. Whereas if I just have this road heading down into the town, the only vehicles that are ever going to use that are the delivery vehicles from my warehouse. Uh, can we adjust this terrain a little bit? I would really, really like that if we could just make that over there. Oh, no, no, no. That's not quite what I wanted to do. Why was it going? Oh, I was raising load. I wanted flatten. My bad. There we go. So flatten that there. And uh, it'll come straight up. And we need to flatten it down a little bit on this side as well. There we are. So we've got a nice connection over here. Uh, we could then just link up into the city there. And I think that's going to be fine. All right, let's grab this and run this down. It should be a... Yeah, well, you know, they're going to have to go up hills, which isn't ideal, but also isn't terrible. There we are. So we've linked up to Shandaf right there. Now, I'm going to unpause the game at this point. There are four different speed settings. The last one is, uh, they, they, they increase, so 1, 3, 6, 10, so it's not 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, at normal speed, a game day is 7.5 real world seconds, a month has 30 game days, and a year is 12 months. Speed up time by pressing 2, 6, or 10 times speed. Uh, we might do that, but for now, I'm just going to let things tick on. Now, I would very much like you to deliver oranges. Uh, there we are, oranges to Gandalf. There we are. Farmer's Market, only 54 tiles away. I could deliver to other locations, but that's very far away, and that would be a bit of a pain. Later on, we might not want to send, sell all of our oranges, and so you may have noticed that the amount that I'll store at the destination, uh, as we covered, Gandalf will only use a certain amount of oranges in any particular period, but we're just saying, you know, just keep giving them oranges until they literally can't store anymore and let them use it as they can. I just want the money. But I can tell them to only sell oranges above a certain threshold. This is what I might want to do if I wanted to instead be turning most of our oranges into orange juice. But I still had a bit of overflow of oranges, then I'd want to sell the runoff just to make some money, if uh, that was what we wanted to do. Now, let's have a, a watch. There we go. The water has been gathered, and the water is now dispatched to the warehouse. And now everywhere is collecting water from the warehouse itself and as you can see the little windmill is going there we are everything is going well and uh, the farms themselves are sending out uh, trucks to pick up the the produce or, or rather the oranges there we go let's have a quick look they have currently got no stock of water but all of their fields are now producing so now they're going to start actually storing water in here if we have a look where are we 
Uh, no, we've actually used it there, but the, our first batch of oranges has already been delivered and will be sat in Shandaf right now. If we pause things, these are the delivery trucks and we're going to be seeing quite a lot of delivering going on. But if we check in the farmer's market, we'll see there are four stored oranges there right now. That is absolutely glorious. I approve. Uh, we make two oranges per field. So that's, uh, we've got nine fields. So we're making 18 oranges every 30 days. That's not bad at all, actually. Uh, how often do they use uh, eight per 15? Well, that's actually quite quite enough there. We, we are going to be saturating the market there, but it's currently at 161%. So we'll make a little bit of cash. Now, if you have a look down here, we can see how our cash is moving around. Uh, we sold a decent amount of product there. And realistically, building upkeep, uh, I mean, it's, it's eating a chunk of our money, but we are producing cash right now, which is glorious. Now, you may have noticed that I didn't use all of my tech, and that's because I would like to have a look at the other things that we could produce. For example, we have got wood here, but we've got a construction goods store. Now, this is a higher tier good, and it sells for a lot more. That sells for 2.76. This sells for 28. Uh, farmer's market. We're, on, we're selling the oranges for 11. Eh, eh, that's not neither here nor there. But if we want to produce planks, we're going to need some uh, other kinds of industry for that. We're going to need factories specifically. Let's go ahead and check out the tech tree and see what we can do. So, if we want planks, able to produce wooden planks at a carpentry. Uh, that's not too bad. And I've got two free unlocks. Uh, but only for the first and second row. Uh, I think that would actually include this one. I'm not entirely sure. But uh, there we go. So we've got planks there. Is there anything else that they might want over here that I could provide? Paint? No. That's not something I can easily do. Uh, paper roll, adhesive, capacitors, bottles. Let's have a look at these. Um, wall panels there. Paper mill. Would require wood. And I could make paper roll out of that. Uh, okay. Able to produce paper roll out of paper mill. Hmm. Might be worth us doing. Uh, paint. No, that's a die. Uh, toys down there. No. Heavy industry. We'd need quite a lot to be able to make glass, to be able to make bottles. That's that's a bit out of our range right now. But we could look at using paper, um, uh, extra trees to, to make uh, paper rolls, which might be worth it. The more goods that you can supply to a place, the better it's going to grow, generally speaking. Now, uh, don't worry about this all the time because it's kind of a running total. The main thing is to look at the last month and see how we're doing. We're, we're actually reasonably profitable right now. We could go for a comfortable bit of profit of popping down um, some grapes or apples. They'd probably earn about the same amount. Eventually, this is going to go down, though. As you can see, the average price is dropping right now, so it's uh, not as great as it could be. But let's go ahead and have a look at different industries. Now, we are going to set up a lumber yard. Now, the lumber yard is different to the farms and the water gatherers because it will use up the resources. This game doesn't have like infinite trees. You can just replant the trees so they are functional, functionally renewable. We can just pay to plant more trees. It takes them a while to grow and then we can chop them down. And generally you'll make a profit on that exchange. But certain things like uh, coal or copper, that's a finite resource. You can't just make more copper in the ground. It's not like Factory Town where you can have an earth shrine that is restocking all of the depleted resources. No, unfortunately not. Uh, I'm going to actually po pop this fairly close in there. There we go. Now, much like the water siphon, we are going to have a bunch of gatherers. And I want the gatherers to be able to access a decent amount of trees each. So, uh, one over here. And you'll notice that some of those trees should have turned orange. It's a little bit harder to see. But they've got little orange outlines. And that means that this um, harvester has earmarked those as its trees to gather. And we'll honestly just have them all in a row. That should be fine. And then we'll hook those all up with the road. There we go. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plant trees right away. Now, this can get a little bit pricey, so don't go too overboard. But planting early is going to save you a bit of a headache later on because it does take a while for these trees to grow as it does in real life. So you want to start planting early just to in case you forget later on. That's the way I think about it. Now, this will produce um, one lumber every 10 days. Very well. Uh, now then, we want a factory. And right now, we can only build the carpentry center, which is fine. We'll go ahead and plonk this one down a little bit outside of the range of the uh, the uh, lumber yard there, I think. 
We'll just pop it over here for the time being. Factories take products from farms, gatherers, and even other factories to create new products. Each product created has a tier associated with it. The higher the tier, the higher its value, but less demand it might have. And that is a very important one to note. Uh, let's hook that up to a road. And uh, just to illustrate that, if we have a look at the hardware store, they want 10 per 15 days, whereas this one wants only 7 per 15 days. Quite, quite a big uh, difference there. Uh, it'll take extra time to process these as well, so... Uh, currently, we'll make one wooden plank every 20 days. It requires three logs, though. So, that uh, we're producing um, three every 10. So, in the first 20 days, we'll have made six. So, we'll be doubling uh, what we need. So, we can run two carpentry off that. In fact, we can run um, a little bit more as well because we're overproducing. In fact, we can run three carpentries off this. Um, so, that should be fine on the whole. Um... Well, actually saying that, no, no, we, we can we can run two. The third would maybe get a little bit of overflow, but uh, I think overall we'll we'll play it safe and we'll just plonk down two to start with. So let's get a secondary uh, second carpentry center. Now this one doesn't have anything built up around it, so you can actually plonk these in quite close together, and it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, we'll leave this as plank, uh, plank, sawmill. Well, yeah, plank mill. Shh, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to. I just need to know what it means. Plank mill two. There we go. And this one is just lumberyard one. It doesn't need to be anything else. Likewise, we are going to place down another warehouse. Now, we don't need to in this instance. Now, the reason why it was particularly good to have the warehouse down there is because we're producing water, then we're distributing it, then pulling it in, then distributing that away. And the warehouse can do all of that. Now, what we could do here, and I'm going to do it just to illustrate it. I will eventually go back to having a warehouse, but I can choose destinations. I've got three potential um, destinations. You can improve that through uh, research later on. But my first destination is going to be Plank Mill 1, and my second destination will be Plank Mill 2. So there we go. These will then, this will dispatch the, the items rather than, uh, well, much like the water siphon. And then these would um, request them from the local warehouse. They'd send out a truck to collect it. In this case, we're just delivering it straight to the, uh, the carpentry. Now, that does have positive and negatives to it. It's not as efficient as it might sound because we're putting a lot more trucks on the road overall. I've tended to find that the use of warehouses has generally caused uh, a bit more logistics headache with regards to the trucks, but you've got a bit more flexibility as a result. Whereas this, you've got far less flexibility because I can only send this out to three places. Whereas if it was always being sent to one warehouse automatically, that warehouse could be um, fueling, I don't know, a dozen, two dozen different factories. Now what I need to do here is each one, I need to tell it to go to the commercial and we'll sell to Candaf. Over here, we've got a different option. If we want to, we could sell somewhere else, but honestly, 790 tells versus 63. Again, we're paying for the distance that these have to travel. The only other one to be aware of is that we can sell to the state, but that's 384 tells. Now the state will pretty much only buy at 100%. There are some random events that might happen that'll change that, but generally speaking, the state is not the one that you want to be selling to. You can, however, buy things from the state, and that is very, very important to be aware of. So we'll see how that one works out. Uh, as we can see, plenty of things going on down here at the warehouse. Now, the big thing about this is the warehouse can more or less send as many trucks as it needs to send. But we've got a very limited amount of trucks that we can send over here. Oh, dear. What has been an issue for the region, but now it has gotten worse. Well, that's actually a little bit of a scallywag. Events are, indicate, uh, are incidents that happen during the game. Some will help you, blue. Others will hinder you, red. Orange ones have a bit of both. <sighs> well, that is going to slow things down quite a lot. But one of the things I was just mentioning is that the right now, each of these locations has a set amount of trucks, three generally, uh, and they can all be sent off to the warehouse, or in this case, one goes out and collects everything. They can only carry one item at a time. The warehouse, their trucks can only carry one item at a time, but it doesn't seem that the warehouse has as many issues with uh, moving product around. 
it seems to be able to just send out ridiculous amounts of trucks as needed. Now, I don't believe that's the case with the the production buildings themselves. Uh, I think that if you've got these trucks moving out there, it's going to take them a while to get back. But I could be wrong about that one. Um, now, you may notice over here we've got pollution. That. Trees are good against pollution, but it basically consumes the tree. Um, the tree dies, but it, it soaks up the pollution, pollution while it's around. Um, this will just kill a lot of our saplings, unfortunately. Um, likewise, it'll affect farms, it'll affect water. You can fix that. Now, we've got one free unlock left, and we're going to go into logistics, I believe. There we go. The air purifier. Can build air purifiers. So we're going to go ahead, and we're going to unlock that. Now, this isn't a one-stage process, unfortunately. It does need something to help it. But with the pollution there, air purifier uses water collected from a water siphon or water well to clean the surrounding area of pollution. And that is definitely something we want to do. And I'm going to plonk, plonk that right about here. So that will help um, very quickly dealing with this pollution. But it does need to be given water. As your factories are generating products, they will produce pollution, which will harm nearby farms, water gatherers, and settlements if it spreads too much. By using these buildings, you can help contain and control the levels of pollution. Now, the issue with this is that uh, this does need water, and we're... <laughs> Right now, we're using more than we're producing because of this horrid little thing. But under normal circumstances, we'd just be using um, just a we'd be using as much as we were producing. So either way, we need another water siphon. Now, you can have a water well. The water well uses harvesters to collect units of water from underground. But I'm not sure exactly how this one works. Maybe I could just build that over here because it isn't really water that close by. But honestly, I think the water siphon is probably fine. We can probably gather enough water from this little area for all of our needs. So let's pop this one down about there. We'll have another one, I think. Oop, auto saving progress. Have another one over here. And another one. Just, well, we can have this one over here. That shouldn't actually go pop it over there because I can make the roads connect a little bit better. Now, you don't need to have all of these harvesters. It's up to you. Uh, I like to use them since I've got them. So there we go. That is all connected, and we can run this all the way down and connect up into the forest there. At this point, I am going to be lazy, and I'm going to place down this. Now, I want to get it in such a position. Uh, see, that's a little bit of a, a problem is realistically I would have liked this warehouse to be about here. And that would allow me to do a little bit more. So that's uh, it's a bit of a shame, but I am going to do, delete this. Let's uh, get this whole thing away. We've got a bit of a refund, which is frankly quite, uh, quite merciful of them. Uh, but let's go ahead and place the warehouse down first, I think. Probably a wiser move there. Let's not delete the trees. Well, that's just spending money for the sake of spending money. Uh, right, we want this, I'm going to say, just tucked in about here. Now, let's pop that there. I like to have roads going all the way around my warehouses. Uh, for no particular reason, but uh, they do enter there and then exit on a different location. So it does seem to make a bit of sense to me. Right, pathing alert. Yes, I know, I know. Uh, this one, why are you having a pathing alert? Ah, you're now trying to put it into the warehouse. That's an automatic thing. Uh, very well. Uh, let's go ahead and rename this warehouse then to um, Plank Warehouse. And we'll just call it, call it there. There we go. Automatically updated. Now, this should automatically be using the warehouse. Yes, it is. So that's going to be a lot easier. But additionally, this will automatically be using the warehouse. Or at least I hope it will be. Yes, they'll be trying to send it out to the air purifier. We'll also call this one Plank Purifier. There we are. Just so I know where it is if I'm looking at a list. Right, so with that done, let's go ahead and place this gatherer back down. Now, again, we want this to be within the, the radius of that warehouse. So I should have done it this way to start with. I'm a dope. What can I say? There we go. That will... So it will produce more than enough water here. Now, the problem with that is, unfortunately, that means the uh, warehouse is going to be constantly complaining that it's overstuffed with water. But maybe we'll find a use for that uh, elsewhere. But there we go. We should see some water delivered shortly. And then that will get delivered to the, the purifier. And then that will help to offset the pollution that we've got going over there. There we go. In we come. 
And there we are, straight away, getting out there, grabbing the water. And there we go, the pollution is being gotten rid of. Fantastic, I approve. Right, well, now that we've got a warehouse, we need to give them something to do. And specifically, we want to take those planks out of here if we can. Uh, where would that be? Would that be... Uh, it should be a tier one, I would imagine. There we are, yes, wooden planks. Please be sure and take these down to... Shandaf, right there. Additionally, because we probably will be overproducing a little bit, um, or at least later on I intend to, uh, the cost of terraforming reduced by 39. Oh, um, I could bid on this. Now, I haven't really covered the auctioning, but this event means that in Shandaf, the cost of terraforming will be 39% lower for a year. Doesn't really matter to me. They've already bid on it. Um, I don't imagine that I'm going to be doing much terraforming over here, and I can't imagine that they're going to be uh, terraforming here either, because I've got the building permit. Now, so, I guess this might mean that even though Kandaf is the one selling it, it would affect every region. Hmm. I might want to take it just so someone else can't get it. Uh, sure, I'll be a scallywag. There we go. We're bidding on it fairly heavily. Initially, we will be popping down quite a lot of industry, I guess, so it's uh, not too bad. Plus, uh, with that, I will just plant all of the trees forever. Uh, right, we want raw resources. Ooh, did someone... Oh, you really want it. I don't think I want it that bad, though. It's, it, it would be getting it to the point of half a million. Uh, no, you can have it. Uh, all right. But I would like to send this to Gandalf, but only, and only, only, if there are... 10 units in storage. So we will be building up the wood in there. But then once we've got over that, we'll just sell the overflow. Be fun. Wow, they really are. Oof. There's a lot of uh, potential terraforming going on right there. Uh, likewise, though, uh, I am going to... Well, we could sell the water if we particularly wanted to. And honestly, Handaf is going to have uh, an abundance of water. So sure. It's whether we'll make enough money on it, though. Let's have a look. Handaf... Do you buy water? Um, let's have a look. Hardware store. Oops. I do uh, apologize for that. Was my uh, alarm going off? Uh, right. Hmm. I'm not sure that we can sell water to Shandaf. We could always check it out. My goodness, they're almost up to... Well, they are up to three quarters of a million now. They really want that. Well, let's see what our options for selling water are. Um, I could send it to farms, pollution... Uh, yeah, I could sell it to the state. No, because I'll be paying for the truck to do that. So no, we're not selling water. Uh, maybe I could send over the the extras to the orange warehouse if I particularly need to. Maybe. Um, for the time being, that might actually make sense. Uh, simply because we're going to have a bit of a shortage there. But it's a long way for it to travel. Um, 119 tiles. Uh... But our oranges are making quite a lot of money for us, so perhaps this is worth us doing. So, I'm again, I'm going to tell them, only do it if you've got over 10 in storage. Gameplay alert. Auction lost. Well, yeah, I wasn't really trying there, honestly. I was just trying to get them to spend more money, and it seemed to work, actually. Though, maybe they would have done that by themselves. But we're seeing some money starting to flow into the coffers. We're, we're getting a decent amount there, actually. We're about uh, almost 300,000. Uh, in the green. Now, the last thing we're going to cover before I wrap up this episode is research. Now, we've spent our free research. You might be wondering, how do you get more? Well, currently, we can allocate up to 100,000 um, bucks to, to research, and that's based on your HQ and various other researches. In fact, we can increase that by looking over here and increasing our re uh, research speed. We can increase our gatherers. We can increase the amount of fields that our farms can have, so on and so forth. That is all very, very useful. Um, it does increase, um, it does require that you have uh, here efficiencies so we can work them harder without the extra fields, but uh, if we look over here, then we can increase the fields themselves. We would want orchard tiles, but we'd have to go through two layers first. So we could increase the farm's local storage and then add two extra fields, for example. Um, we could increase the amount of land harvesters we'd have, so that would affect our um, the lumber mills coastal harvest would affect our water siphons, so on, so forth. We can have water towers, which might be worth it at some point, but uh, it's not something I'm going to look at right now. 
What I wouldn't mind looking at is what Shantaf will purchase. Now, they're not going to use orange juice in these because these are purely um, level one goods or rather raw resources. But over here, that paper roll may well be worth us going for. Though uh, the, the profit margin is actually going down. So mm, still, I think it may be worth us looking in because it would help Shantaf. If we have a look at Shantaf, the town is growing. It'll take a while, but eventually it'll grow, and once it grows up to the next level, they'll get a new store, and we'll actually be able to choose which store they're going to have, and that will dictate a lot of how we expand over here. But for the time being, perhaps we'll look at researching something that we can immediately make some decent cash on, and I think we know what that's going to be. That is, in fact, going to be grapes or apples. Um, let me just double check with the farmer's market which one has got the best price. That's 163. What's, that one's going up with 163. So we're going to go with grapes. Grapes it will be. Now this will take a certain amount of time. Take 60 days. If you wish, you can add more unlocks to a queue so you can continue researching with little to no interruptions. And that wouldn't be too bad of an idea, honestly. I think we'll go for farms after that. And then finally, now this one's going to take a lot longer based on the amount that we currently gather. Um, actually... Let's not go for this one. Let's go for water gathering because we're going to need that first and then we can go for the orchards. So we're going to focus on the food quite heavily for a little while. That's going to give us a lot of time to research all of this. But that's going to be it from me for this first episode. I really do hope you have enjoyed and will be joining me for the next. Do let me know down below if you're interested in this game or if you uh, remember my earlier coverage and uh, how you think the game has progressed. I know we haven't really covered too much yet, but they, we have gone over quite a lot of systems that weren't in my er, initial early access coverage. But that's going to be it for me. So until next time, and as always, do take care, everyone.